We are from the planet scarcity of love, while our country is called hyperinflation of heartbreak, our capital city a deflation of kindness, a blood flow of a system of flirtation, a bunch of despicable, irresistible, impeccable disciples of heart crunches. Love the undefinable. Heartbreak the definable. We do not do poetry, we are poetry. Hello everyone, welcome to the second season of the Poetry Slam. I am your host, Aisha Tisise, and of course I'm joined by my lovely co-presenter, Fatu Eliko Mulushi. Yes guys, it's good to be on the Poetry Slam again, like I said last time. This time it's going to go bigger and better, and that is exactly what's going to happen this season of the Poetry Slam. And of course, you all know that the Poetry Slam, I mean, what makes the Poetry Slam even more interesting is our judges. <laughs> I would like to introduce our wonderful judges. First, we're going to start with Mr. Latirka, CEO of Black Magic. Can you please put your hands together? <laughs> Ndai Kumba Demba, presenter at GRTS, and Immortal Ba. <laughs> Immortal X. Immortal X, <laughs> oh, Ali Uba. <laughs> Ali Uba, you have too many long names. So, an activist, a poet, and a writer. Please put your hands again. Thank you so very much. And uh, we would like to thank the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education for partnering with GRTS on this season of the Poetry Slam. And it's actually something that we are so, so very proud of. And we just hope that we get more and more partners as time goes by. So uh, on that note, I would like to acknowledge the presence of our able DG, uh, Mr. Ibrahim Silla, Director General GRTS. And we also have Babukar Senghor here with us. He's also um, one of our seniors uh, in, the, in the newsroom department. And we also have Mr. Momodu Savali. He's been with us since day one. Mr. Momodu, thank you for being here. We also thank all of you for coming and supporting your fellow poets in this program. So now at this junction, we would like to invite our Director General, Mr. Ibrahim Asila. Can you please put your hands together? <laughs> to give uh, an opening remark. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for coming. Let me also recognize uh, the presence of uh, Mr. Modu Savali, who, in fact, uh, during his uh, time as Director General of GRTS, actually initiated uh, this important initiative. Um, we want to thank him. Because uh, anything that will uh, help our young people speak their mind, especially, I mean, uh, in the form of art, is extremely very important. So that uh, wherever they go, they can fully express themselves and say things that are of utmost importance to them. So giving them a platform at the national level to do that, I think, uh, was a very good initiative. And we recognize that. And we want to thank you, Mr. Savali, for, for this very good initiative. Um, I also would like to thank uh, the able judges who have uh, taken all the time out of their busy schedules to be here with you every week, to hear from you, and then to learn from you, as well as uh, go through with you all the important points and poems that we are going to give out. And you know, this is something that I think is uh, a big sacrifice on their part, and we want to also thank them for coming and then be part of the uh, initiative that will enhance the process of uh, making the young people, I mean, independent in giving them a platform to speak. So thank you so much for, for, for coming. I also would like to thank uh, the uh, Ministry of uh, Basic Education for their partnership uh, with uh, the Gambia Radio and Television Services. Um, this is the second um, edition of uh, the program. And um, as Director General, I want to um, confirm that uh, this matter was discussed at our senior management level, and uh, I gave my uh, full endorsement. And I want to assure you that uh, we will continue not only to embrace this, but we will support it. We will uh, see it grow bigger and bigger. We want to encourage a lot of young people to come here, use their creativity, to speak truth to power, to uh, speak their own mind, and then also be like role models for the young people who are going to watch them. So I want to encourage all of you to take this competition very seriously because who knows? I mean, uh, it started very small. It is growing bigger. And then uh, maybe by the time this year's uh, edition ends, 
we may see some of you participating in international uh, competitions. You know that uh, the GRTS is now uh, global. We are now available on a platform that uh, even those in the diaspora can watch us real time. Uh, some of these programs can also be uploaded on uh, Facebook and our other social media platforms where, I mean, uh, other young people across the world can see you and then uh, see exactly how creative some of you people are with the world. And uh, it is also important that uh, the young people in this country are encouraged to read and to read and understand. So these are some of the programs that uh, we need to encourage not only to encourage our young people to read, but to understand. Because there was a, a report on the Gambia, which actually shows that uh, almost a large percentage of young people who read don't actually understand what they read. So programs like this will encourage young people to read, but also to understand what they are reading and make good use of what they are, what they are reading. So thank you so much. I mean, I, I want to assure you that uh, we will encourage and you know, go with you along and uh, give you our full support as, a, as an institution so that by the time you know this program ends this year, all of us will benefit largely from it, but particularly you, the young people, and your, and your mates that are outside watching you and then giving you the necessary support. Our, our, our platform is also already the SMS platform, and I want to encourage uh, the program producers to engage you um, on that platform as well so that young people can also be texting when this program is on to uh, make it very interactive and uh, you know engage you on that platform as well. So once again, thank you so much, and uh, you rest a sort of my uh, full support and encouragement. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please put your hands together for the DG again. Thank you so much for your assurance. Um, Aisha, before you go, I would like to thank again Mr. Sengor, the director of TV programs, for saving us from the thirst because he was the one who had to help us get all these paths of waters you see in here. Thank you so much, Mr. Sengor. So um, before we start the program proper, judges, you're welcome to the program. And I would just like to ask you all, what are your expectations for this particular season of the Poetry Slam this time around? Good evening uh, to our viewers and also um, the poet here, Moloshi and um, Fatmata have done a good introduction of everyone present here today. Um, I look forward to amazing poetry as, as we did the last time. It was beautiful, it was awesome. You saw amazing poets um, rise from the competition and who are making headway for themselves, which is quite encouraging for the upcoming poets. Um, the last season, they did very well, I must say. And they have set the bar really high but I am also hopeful that um, the new poets coming in this time also would equally do um, justice to the slam so. So I am excited and happy to be here. Great. Good afternoon to everyone. Expectations. Um, I don't want to scare anyone, so I won't say much. But we had an awesome season the last time. Um, the core of the event is the poets and their poetry. And so you guys have to bring it. Um, like Nekumba said, the bar has been raised very, very high. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of very young faces. And usually you guys speak truth to power, like the DG said, more than anyone. So I'm hoping we have an awesome time. We just want to have fun. We want to throw it out there. We want to show what we have in this country. And I hope that you guys bring it better than we had last season. I'm hopeful, very hopeful. I don't really entertain expectations, but um, if there's anything I'll be expecting is that it should be as challenging as it comes. Like, it's not supposed to be um, one of those, you know, Mama Africa poems and River Gambia and all these things. You're supposed to bring something that is, um, is thought-provoking. It's something that speaks truth to power, like this head and something that challenges the narrative, the norms, and everything. But at the most, it's supposed to be artistic, and it's supposed to sound poetic, because it's poetry. It's not a political speech or whatever it, uh, you want to make it. So um, like, like they said, the first time, those people, they went hard. So I'm expecting you guys to go really hard, like Trump our expectations, right? Yo. Thank you very much. So I would like to ask a question to the participants. Last time, you guys watched the Poetry Slam, right? Who was the meanest judge? Please be honest. Please be honest. Really, I 
Is it Latir? Ay, just wait. Is it Dekumba? Just wait. Obviously, not immortal, is it? Wait. It's immortal. It's Latir. Hey, Latir, see? Just wait. Before we go on, we would like to introduce the first participant. Can you please come on stage? Okay, we'll begin with our first contestant, who is Alasana Jala. Alasana, welcome to the show. Hello. You are our first contestant of the day, um, second season Poetry Slam. No pressure. Why did you want to come on the Poetry Slam show? I want to join the Poetry Slam, or I joined the Poetry Slam because of the person I gained from the last competition. Mm -hmm. I was so glad when I saw my colleagues exhibiting their talents that I wasted no time when I had this time mm -hmm. around that there will be Poetry Slam. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Alassane. What is the title of your poem? The title of my poem is Nawek and It's Havoc. Nawek and It's Havoc. <laughs> My poem is like this. It's in three phases. One, we have the Jola phase, that's phase one. And the second phase is the Mandinka phase. And the third phase is the English phase. So, to start with Jola. Balayo bal koe jitu melam komi aflo ayirono si bes andu kone jamane yola yoni mbes han ufimut fang bare mo balayo bal uwalo ja burokop letu tok melam sinde oke ngang na e kobe regi generido e kanyo kanyo baga se ji kanyo kanyo bukanak tu ji kanyo kanyo e nawek diram ben bukanak bukanak tu ku gaga going to the mandinka version now is that Kurang ola kumaya tambit han kumbaya la na fola. Kurang ola hakili teng kung ola sabon di wala atin na han sa to kurang ola kurang ola kumaya taman di gil. Ndolu o mambo folon kadu na we kamunta ko san fetong ebe tala ebe na la ebe tela ebe malas la ebe ngalas la ebe malas la. Wati o wati sa fo ena generi tol tinyata na baka sol tinyata na baka sol tinyata na esan sol banta na we kama ko mol minya longko idol fangol manta do ku kendel. Now going to the English version is like this. Sometimes I admire the Stone Age because the days of my age is in wage with wars of Nawek. Nawek has ravaged my age like a rag. The days of my ancestors were days of darkness. When the great legendary sagas prophesied my days of lightness, which has been turned ironical by Nawek. Notwithstanding the unworthy stand of Nawek, Nawek remains a disgrace and Havoc to the generation. Sometimes I ask myself million rhetorical questions, but it seems like they are infected with Nawek's reflections. I ask myself, is Nawek sagacious or is Nawek rapacious? Is Nawek a merit or Nawek a demerit? Is Nawek a proponent or Nawek an opponent? Is Nawek passionate or Nawek is unpassionate? This is the generation where we live in glitter. The world is baffled by glitter. But the Gambians are ruffling with litter because no light to glitter. Every day, walking around the Johnsons, you are rasmatized with the other countries. Looking their countries glittering like stars, but Gambia is in Umbra when the rest of the world is in Penumbra. Nawek has remains a havoc and a disgrace. Nawek is so sometimes they will tell you that there is no light to run. They will tell you that generators are faulty. They will tell you that generators are faulty. They will tell you that generators are faulty. When were those generators faulty? They are unconscious of people's depth, while they are conscious to their in-depth to the last coins of depth. Watching around the world of glitters, you will see others' worlds glittering with lights, while Gambia is glittering with darkness. Every day, Light keeps waddling like light, while uh, water keeps pissing like snake posing venom. They have put everything in disarray since they carry their lights without any case on it, leaving everything in plundering. On that note, I thank you all.
Um, thank you very much, Alassane. I think from the start you got us all excited when it was Nawek. Um, I would rather you didn't do the introdu brief introduction and that was um, the poem is going to be threefold. I'm going to do Maninka, um, Jola and then English. I would have had you just rather go into the performance. Your audience will follow. The introduction was absolutely unnecessary. Um, I did love the Jola and I did love the Maninka bit. I think once we incorporate local languages into our poems, it adds on to the poem. Um, I did love, absolutely love that. Uh, for the English performance, I was not very thrilled about it. I think it sounded more like a speech, but then you had your poems, you had your points, so it was kind of a balance. Um, overall, it was good, and thank you for a good start. Alasana? Okay. I don't speak Jola, but I enjoyed the Jola bit. It, it sounded very poetic, regardless. Uh, so I'll give you that. I didn't like the narrations, I didn't like you breaking the piece and explaining what's coming next and all of that. It's a room of poets, so we all get it. We all get the illustrations without you making them. For me, I expected better. So, unfortunately, if we're voting, I'd be, I'd be given a no for that. Um, Imota? <clears throat> Okay, I don't know whatever you mixed up in that jola, but this shit was good. Like it was getting me going, like you know, kanyo kanyo and all that stuff. It's good. Um, like everybody's saying, um, I really didn't vibe with the whole, um, you know, introductory phases that you had in, and the English. I was totally not feeling it, you know. But um, I think the mandinka and the jola really did it for me. So. Um, 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 it's a no from me. Um, oh, Alastana, okay. I would have voted yes, and that's because of the Jola and the Mandinka. So it's a yes for me, but unfortunately, you have two no's. Thank you. Could you introduce yourself? What's your name? My name is Abduba. You're Abduba from? Sanchaba Sulejo. Sanchaba Sulejo. How old are you? Um, 23. 23. When did you start doing this poetry? Poetry since my uh, since I graduated from my grade 12. From your grade 12. Yeah. And how long ago has that been? Say that again. How long ago has that been? No, how many know. years has that been? Um, four years now. Four years now. Yeah. Okay. Are you here to win this? Actually. <laughs> are you here to win this or are you here to try? I'm here to win it. To win it? Yeah. I like the confidence. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's your piece? My piece, the title of my piece is The Beggar's Coin Speaks. The? The Beggar's Coin Speaks. The Beggar's Coin Speaks. Okay. Lovely title. Let's hear it. Let us sit and think. How do we live till today? The food that passed through our throats every day. The fancy, expensive clothes and shoes we put on each day. How many times do we throw foods in the bin? And how many much more times do we sit to think about these kinds of things? While passing every day morning, many beggars begging breads being on the streets. The beggar's coin speaks. The beggar's coin speaks more than his persuasive mouth does. He wandered the streets with his cardinal stick. His only shoe. His breezy sat and his classic cross back, like a sepat with his sip. The beggar's coin speaks more than his dusty fit six, and his cozy cardboard manifest. He stretches his blessed bliss hands to conjure arms. As a coin joins his cup like a three point in the basket game, he aims his prayers to the most high to raise the coin bearer's high. Yet, without his sight, he knows the signs of the coins with the felt of his hand. He locks his legs like a sin priest, hook his hands at the handle of his hungry cup. On his cozy sack he sit, his stick at his side. Dancing is his cup of country coins, and singing in praise is his mouth for more. No more, he said. For more he mourned for many money, much more to come. He forgot his hair to cut, his cloth to wash, but bless his cup that talks. He tracked the streets like a foot soldier. Praising people for one penny, while walking in the streets, kicking the stones with his stick like a hockey penalty. Oh, with so much pity, our hearts so hard to give out for charity. 
but so fast to give out for brutality. Where is our humanity? When the beggar scope is sick, the finest surgeon, neither the greatest talisman, nor the herbs master can cure, but only the pure hearts can cure. The coins in his palm, jumps in excitement. His treasure cup, he leans for life. The beggar's coin speaks. First of all, I'll say that was nice. I love the message. I love the poetry. Um, you sound like champion, uh, winner of last year's Poetry Slam. Yeah. You sound a lot like him. I hope to see the same content better and bigger if you do go through this round. But I liked it enough to want to see you again. So for me, it's a yes. Abdul, I think the writing was good. I loved it. I am not too sure about the performance. Um, I didn't think there was flow in, in your performance. And if there was any flow, it was very inconsistent. And there were portions where, where you were too loud. And if you ask me, unnecessarily loud. So I would say cut on that if you do make it through to the next round. Uh, for now here, Immortal, I'm not too sure to vote yet. I think I was kind of moved because this is something that I observe in society, like how we treat these beggars like, you know, this secondary existence that they live in our society unnoticed, unheard, unsolicited for when they're gone, they're not remembered. When they are present, they're not um, sort of perceived. And, you know, the core message of the poem is very powerful and it's very real and it's something that we see every day. And I love that bit, but I didn't, lo I didn't like the melodrama. There was a lot of drama, you know, and, and there was a lot of loudness. And I think you can improve on that in the next time, because we live and we learn. But it's a yes. Congratulations. OK, um, I'll give you a yes for the poem. But as far as performance, do work on it. OK, thank you very much. A very good afternoon to you. Afternoon. Aliu. Yes, sir. Welcome to this platform. Um, I see the purpose of your entry is to send a message to the world. What type of message are you trying to send to the world? I would like to send a message to the world and soon they will hear it. It's about the mentally challenged. A portion of our society are treat, mistreated and, or maltreated, I should have said. And I hope to change that with my poetry. Mm, interesting. Um, I see that um, you, um, you really are ready for this. And I hope you don't disappoint me because it looks like you are, you know, you look like a poet right now, you know, with your head let down like that and all of that. So we'll hear you out. What's the title of your poem, please? The title is The Mentally Challenged. The Mentally Challenged. Let's get on it. His days haven't always been like this. No, at some time he'd felt bliss. When the mind was filled with thoughts and memories, only illness could take away. Now this once healthy figure lurks in the shadows of society's failures and forgotten sorrows. A man now mocked by children in chorus who wanders our streets helpless every day. You see him walk down the street in rags and bare feet, ignorant of the cold and heat, but laugh not at the mentally ill man. He'd been laughed at before, because of the illness he bore, given only to sleep on the floor, abandoned by his own plan. A few care about whether he drinks or eats, or whether he starves on the streets, in his tortured frame illness meets, hunger without a helping hand. Every day continues his plight, morn, noon, and night, and I wonder where he sleeps tonight, when darkness envelops the land. Oh, what a darkness in which to abide, Lost in this world with no guide, with no brother, no sister beside, no friend, no family. As he now sits on the streets to rest watching, backing, the people marching, past him nightfall fast approaching, I wonder when will end this apathy. On the streets he now sleeps, inns among the bushes and heaps of refuse, oblivion to that which creeps and crawls in the night unseen. When it rains on him it rains, Bitter cold nights solidify his pains, 
And yet when he cries out in anguish and complaints, no one seems to hear, though he is keen. And at morn, when he wakes, in this community that forsakes, him in his plight of aches, he takes to wandering lost again. Whenever we cease to care and cease to care, whenever we cease to empathize and cease to care, and the burdens of our responsibilities refuse to bear, that is when we impair our society. When we stand by and do nothing to heal, the wounds of our societies unseal our hearts to the pains that others feel, that's when we lose our humanity. We laugh not at the mentally ill man who is sick, frail, and wan, but do for him what you can to help ease his agony. We must never abandon our mentally ill brothers, sisters, fathers, and mothers, for doing so only hinders humanity's prosperity. That's the end. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, Malosi, can you guys give, give him the trophy? Let's just go home. Like, this is amazing, right? This is what we're talking about. When we say poetry, no drama, just straight to the point, right? And this is beautiful. So I'll give you a triple yes, plus the two yeses that are coming, right? Yeah, but this is beautiful. And this, this talks about applied in our community, like the Abdul uh, was saying in his poem about you know, the beggar. And this is about the mentally challenged. Yeah. And, and it's about time you start these conversations, right? Yeah. About people who are on the margins of society. People who are pushed out of society. And I'm glad that these conversations are coming from the right places, right? It's coming from young people. And this, this is the most beautiful poem I've heard being recited in a long time. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I think you got Immortal here all excited. Thank you. Um, yes, we quite agree. Um, your performance was amazing. It was um, effortless. And your performance was effortless. And it's beautiful just watching you perform. And you sound like something I would. You sounded like, um, you know, a ringtone. I, I could I could have your voice as a ringtone because it's mm. that soothing. Thank you. Mm. And I'm glad when you came, you said you have a message to the world. And I say your message is powerful, your message is clear, and your message needs to be heard. So thank you for coming on the slam and deciding that. It was beautiful. Uh, I'll ask a question first. Yes, sir. Um, obviously, you have issues with your sight. Uh, since when? Uh, since I was four. Since you were four? Yeah. Where did you go to school? Sorry? Where did you go to school? I went to Govi. Research Center for the Blind. Okay, I think I think Govi Govi needs needs a shout out. I think it needs a shout out. I, I I'm saying that because I'm saying that because you're talking about the mentally challenged. Yeah. You obviously grew up with a challenge of, of your of your own, but you're selfless enough to put that aside and, and to talk about another uh, challenged area of our society. So for that alone, for your humanity alone, I just I just want to say thank you. Now to your piece. Many people are great writers. Many people are either great writers or great performers. We have great writers and great performers that yes. don't have the voice. My man, you, you, have, you have it all. Your voice, I could, I could, I could he's, she's talking about a ringtone, I could sleep listening to your voice. Uh, so, 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 so just the soothing side of it, the belief in what you're saying, Everyone can tell it comes from the heart. I don't care about poetry slam. I come here for two reasons. It's either poetry slam or myself and what I do. Whether you win poetry slam or not, I want to work with you. That, that's, that's one thing I'll tell you. This is amazing, amazing. I'm saying this because it's gonna get tougher. It's warming up. I know there are going to be some really, really great poets coming on set. So I'm saying no matter what happens, know that you have a voice, you have a message, and you have to push it. So it's, he's, he, he said three yeses, it's four yeses from me. And I wish you, I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very, very much. Oh, and I do care about Poetry Slam. I meant it in another way. Thank you very much. So people, bring it, huh? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, Adjoni. I am great. How are you? I'm fine. Um, why did you want to come to the Poetry Slam? Um, to show the world what I've got and uh, to take risks. 
And to take risks. Yeah. I, I love that. And by the way, I love the hair. Thank you. Uh, what's the title of your poem? The African Queen. The African Queen. Yeah. Awesome. You must allow your title. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's do this. Enough is enough. See, she's remained silent, lowered her head and bowed her eyes. See, enough is enough, for she couldn't take it anymore. Um, see, don't you know that I am the African queen, the daughter of great African huntsmen? See, don't you know that I am the only treasure that lions got? See, light skin and dark skin, I come in every shade, for it was of ever great beauty that I was made. See, the Greeks did not understand, the Romans will not understand, but you, you were never going to understand. But this, this isn't fair. Why didn't they teach you? Why didn't they teach you about me like they taught you about me? Why didn't they teach you to accept me like they taught me to accept you? For it was of ever great beauty that I was made. See, when I was to, oh my God, I'm missing everything. See, don't you know that I was raised by the harems in the valleys of the Melanian kingdom? That my mother too was the Ethiopian queen of Sheba? So I rise before you, my crown pointing at the sun whilst the rays lay it down. So go ahead and tell them. Tell them that I am not a queen because I was the daughter of kings and kings, but I was made by the kings of all kings. Tell them. Tell them that this is not an exaggeration, for Yah Ashantihewa of Ghana taught me the education. So tell them. Tell them not to be fooled because my parents don't wear crowns, for I was... Tell them not to be fooled because my parents don't wear crowns, for I was born a queen before even the lion was crowned. But until, but a great man once said, even if after the savannah dies and the hunter dies, the lion will always be the forest pride. Thank you. Aji, when did you write this point? Um, I wrote this um, right. some days ago. Some days ago. Um, I ask because your performance, you had a lot of breaks in your performance. Understandably, you're nervous, but also you have to prepare because it's a competition and people come fully prepared. Um, I would say next time, if you do make it through, make sure you rehearse your points and you also rehearse your performance because it's equally important. Sometimes you have a good piece, but the performance takes it away. Um, I thought the writing was beautiful and you know, kind of challenge the um, beauty standard, which I like. So I am not really sure at this moment. I think the writing was good, but the breaks here and there took a lot from your performance. You said one thing. You said you came here to take risks. That was a very big risk to take. I'm sure you've written other pieces before that you've memorized, but it seems you wanted to have that heard. For me, this is a last chance yes for you it's a last chance yes for you you do anything like that again on stage i'm giving you three no's on behalf of my fellow judges but for for today i think the poetry was nice you almost messed it up but it's a message that needs to be heard um, and i'm sure immortal will give you a history lesson there were a couple of hiccups there but but yeah uh, it's a yes, very soft yes from me. Now, usually, I I really don't like poems that depict us as kings or queens or writers that depict us as such. I believe, like one of my one of the brothers said, that we were not kings and queens; we were survivors because we survived a lot to be here today. Um, but nonetheless, I'm not the one who is going to judge what you are going to say about yourself or to implant myself in your place. That aside, um, yeah, this one is hard, you know. It's, it's, it's really a good poem. You had bombs here and there. Um, also, be very mindful when you write historical, um, when you bring history into conversation with what you're trying to say, you know, and you know, to be very mindful of your facts because there, this is going to be on the television and you know all of that stuff the people pick it up and run away with it um, <clears throat> but it's a it's a yes I want to see what you do because you're dressed up for the occasion like one of those African queens so yeah
with the rest of the judges, but if you come next time, like Latir said, this is a soft yes and kind of a break yes, but if you come back, your performance has to, it has to be good. Rehearse as many times as you need. When you come here, try to match your point with your performance because the two go hand in hand. So it's a soft yes. Okay, we'll go straight to this. Bintu Drami, right? Yeah, Bintu Drami. Where are you from? From Willingara. Willingara. Yeah. Uh, how old are you? 17. 17. Which school are you in? Koto Senior. Koto Senior Secondary School. school yeah. How long have you been in poetry? Um, two years. Two years. What's your favorite subject? My favorite subject? Well, I'm doing science. In poetry? In poetry. I like the history part of poetry. History. Okay. What do you have for us today? Well, I have po um, poverty. Poverty. Yeah. Okay. I think something we all can relate to. So let's, let's hear it. Poverty. The endless battle ever fought. The sticky stigma that keeps attached. Choiceless, unwanted, we had to endure. Struggle for our lives need secure. How can you defeat when it stands undefeated? Seen but cannot be cited. Thought over, sadly, can't be inter interpreted. Accompanied with struggle, day in day out we hustle. This that has brought relations with hunger, the former dragging along the latter. Spend nights in unroofed tents, fight back cold in silence, gaze at a distance for a replace and days pass us in same place. Mind subjected to torture, rules every day with new procedures. We cry out, it is a cause. Yet others break out, it is a disease. Stomach and intestines grow weak. The mind and the body become sick. Waiting for one miserable meal a day, we walk to and fro like those in the wonderland. We bite our fingers as failures on land sat and gaze in despair, staring at the endless heavens, parents helpless, children restless, they lay side by side motionless, poverty the king in rule. Thank you. It's a, it's a, it's a no for me. It's a no for me. Better luck next time from me. writing about poverty and as Latin did say earlier, it's something that we can all relate to. Um, the piece didn't do it for me, neither did the performance, so it's a no. Um, I like the fact that we are going in a sequential form with um, beggars and mentally chilling and poverty. So just for the fact and for give, giving you at least a glimpse of hope that these people don't really represent what you write, I'll give you a yes. Hello, everyone. Hello, Ibrahim. Um, so you say um, you want to exhibit your skills and your yeah. poetic abilities. Exactly. OK, that's interesting. How old are you? I am 28. 28. Yeah. Great. Great time to be alive. Yes. So uh, what's the title of your poem? Mediterranean Graveyard. Mediterranean Graveyard. Yeah. Yeah, let's go on with this one. All right. Here it goes. Gargantuan exodus of Negroes from Punta Kintalan to the west. Migrants with brandy dreams targeting the best. Reaching Lampedusa is a vision vaccinated in his chest. Cadaver of a migrant strangely appears to eyes as best. Strong, sailors, salsoli succeed in the sea test. When dead knocks, the ooze and wears cups as its vest. Unlucky Africans sat the lost souls to rest. I pray for a day when illegal migration will appear as jest. I wept. Hearing that Daura Jawara is lying on death's nest, I will extremely extol you because better life was your quest. Telling this tale reminds my mind a depressing jest. In Talinding, before his decampment, I saw him last. The desert rains and pollute eyes with dirty dust. Set to avenge the death of a friend with my fist. The evaporation of his killer is what I planned first. A racist Libyan, but amongst humans, he is the least. 
But racism is already a decomposed myth. The killer of doubt, greedily guarded, racism played to eat. An innocent Gambian is assassinated. I heard a shout. Our days together was a golden paint. Imagination convincing my mind that thou are a saint. Generosity that signs on your path benefited even an aunt. I hugged tears when I saw the weeping of thy aunt. But a friend is gone. Yes, a friend is gone. I asked where. They said home. In loneliness, I sleep alone. In prayers, I speak aloud. Rest in peace, Dauda. Here in your heinous murder, I was colonized by feathers of faint. Since we're going to meet in the hereafter, then I will patiently wait. Thank you. I think Dada would be proud that you remembered him and that you did a eulogy for him. And this, this reminds me of my friends too of past in this Mediterranean, um, in these high Mediterranean waters and in Libya. And it's a yes. And keep it up. I am sorry about your friend. May his soul rest in peace. I mean. Um, I didn't think you had a player team. I think there were a lot of things inside the point. Daikumba has put me in a very tight spot. Really difficult now. I love the theme, I love the message. The poem was a little bit too repetitive for me. And it's a no for me. Uh, thanks. Hi. Is it Fado? Yeah, Fado Mbanda. Pa Paddy? I said welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks. How old are you? I'm 19. 19? Yeah. What do you mostly write about? Huh? What do you mostly write about? I write for Africa. You write African poems? Yeah. Are you doing one African piece today? Uh, I do write African poems and as well as different kind of poems. Uh, different kind of poems. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, what's the title of your poem today? Uh, it's Unity. Africa should stand for. Africa should stand for unity? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, you can go ahead. The force of Africa is still breathing. They are still impeding. Impeding her from developing. Her innocent children, they are obstructing. They are obstructing them from achieving what they aspire for and corrupting her innocent children by discriminating her innocent souls by continuously planting hatred in her kingdom. Some say that the force of Africa is Africa's self-government who are not really for any development, but to maltreat and torment their own people. <sighs> but to maltreat and torment their own people by... Some say that the force of Africa is Africa self-government, who are not really for any development, but to maltreat and torment their own people and ferment them by slowing down the movement of anything that could lead to development, and thus cause the subject to look at the the Westerns and commend their leaders for their achievements. When will Africa stand? When would all our riches spread like a sun? So that each child could have something in his hand. Miss Sissi, teach them that I have a dream. Winifred Nicol, air to them on air that I have a dream. Yankuba Mambure, write to them that I have a dream. Anjali Baskuyade, Sing for everyone that I have a dream. I have a dream that all her children should see her with joy. A dream that should not be whispered on ear, but it's a dream. It's a dream that every ear needs to hear before the, before the end of the year. It's a dream that should be shown on TV. It's a dream that should be taught in school so that each ear could hear. Thank you. This is what I have for you. You are very nervous and it's so true your performance. 
I, I understand the nervous, but I'm sure it's a lot of pressure um, coming on TV. Yeah. Because you had a lot of breaks, um, it was very hard to follow. So it's it's a no for me. I'm going to do something we've never done on Poetry Slam. Where's the last performer? Yeah, could you stand up, please? You you, you just you just saved him. I'm changing my no for him to a yes. And unfortunately for you, it's a no. It's a no from me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I think my fellow judges get what I mean. I, your, you, your poem was confusing, and in yeah. the end it was a speech. It sounded like Martin Luther King was trying to reincarnate you and try to make you do a speech for him. But, um, so, better luck next time. It's a no. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. The way it's going, you guys really need to step up. You guys really need to bring your A game. Okay. Honestly. After Aliu, things have been dipping a little bit. So let's bring it. Isaac Moksin Sisi. Yes. How are you doing? I'm good. How old are you? 24 years old. 24 years old. Yeah. And you've been a poet for how long? Five years ago. Five years ago. Yes. I'll, I'll go with Naikumba's pitch. What's your favorite thing to write about? I write about Africa mostly and realities. Realities? Sure. Cultural realities? Pardon? Cultural realities? Definitely, yes. Okay, what do you have for us today? I have Rise Up Mama. Rise Up Mama? Yes. Okay. It's not one of my favorite themes, but let's hear it. Good luck. Okay. Trickle, trickle. Tears run down Mama's cheek. And she's weak. Come on, Mama. You have so many children, features, and creatures to be happy. Though you are angry at your children's submissiveness to the West and the rest. Submissiveness to, to, to strangers who have left you in danger. Sorry, Mama. I love you, Mama. Sorry for your children welcoming all strangers to eat your meat. Sorry for your 54 timid children who are goody two shoes. Children who throw away your goodies in a stranger land. Children who are not ready to help you, Mama. Sorry for the exploitation. Sorry for the mental slavery. Sorry for the conflict. Sorry for your fallen heroes and heroines. Stand up and rise. You are like a plant in the wind. You will bow down and rise again. God will see you through this challenge. Little by little, we will do the next. Just like the birds built the nest. You are the forest that provides food for the hunter. You are the abalis that cures them. They say you are poor, but they depend on you. They say you are the armpit of the world, but you give them profit. You are the ave, you are the hava that provides food for them. Mama, in you, I see the future. Mama, we think we will run together so we can run far. Mama, I will run with you till the highest level. Rise above adversity. Rise above stranger supremacy. Rise above conflict. Abo rise above stranger innovations. Rise above brain drain. No more again. Rise above them all, for you deserve it all and in all. Thank you. I'll make it very short, Isaac. Um, you see more of a descriptive poet than anything. For Poetry Slam, I'd say it's a no. That's a no for me. Okay. Isaac, you look smart. Thank you. I'm glad you look the part. As for the performance, it 
Um, it was an aim for me, it's an Because it's sickly Africa. Um, it sounded like uh, you were doing a prayer for Africa. I was, I was about to say preach, Reverend, because you know the dress and then you were just doing the act. Um, I love the poem, you know, don't get me wrong. I love the poem and I love the prayer and I love the fact that you are trying to lift Africa, which will be hard because we are stopped somewhere. And for the sake of argument, I'll say yes, I'll give you a yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I said to Colin, how old are you? I'm 20. 20, okay. Um, you said in order to showcase my talent in poetry and also acquire a new talent. Uh, that's interesting. What's the title of your poem? The title of my poem is The Pain of a Woman. The Pain of a Woman. Yes. Let's hear it. Good. It reads. Timata no kothenze aywa lina wo musolu batata le who can wipe the tears of women in our societies? It was me during the day. But as the night is about to fall away the sunlight, yet is another innocent prison. I was told that it's patience and courage that keeps a woman moving and moving again and again. But as I grew up, I came to realize that it's courage and confidence that keeps a woman alive. The feminine pains a tree First of all, they cut your face and they said it's a concession. That day you will cry and cry, but nobody will feel your pain, nor your cry. As you keep on moving towards the heights of life's ladder, mother will say, be careful and stay confident because you're going to face another pain again. Why? Because you are a woman. The night they surrender you to your husband, you saw hell. They will still say, courage is all you need. Before he passed through the light or the thick hymen to break the knot, you sowed, yet he was so selfish not to realize what you are. Mother will sowed with a charming smile on her face and say, Oh, my brother has made me proud because he is a virgin. Three, five months later, your mood changes, your appearance changes, everything about you changes because there is something in the stomach. You start to struggle and hustle with the child. Till six, nine months, they said she is in labor. That day, you don't see God, but you see his work. You don't see God, but you feel his help. And mother will say, courage is all you need, my child. At labor, all you hear is pushed, pushed, and pushed. As if you were a wretched band that has been pushed long ago. As you keep on pushing, Pussing and pussing till you ultimately hear cry of a baby. They will rejoice with happiness and announce the birth of a new baby when you are unconscious of your surroundings. But you never let go for hope resides in you. And the ultimate rescue is hope. It is indeed courage and confidence that keeps a woman alive. And you think I will cry? No, I will not cry because I am a woman who was born to be strong, confident, and courageous. Thank you. Thank you, Aizitu. That was a very good performance. And it was full of confidence and courage. Yeah, all power to the women. Um, I, this is a very, very nice um, piece. Thank Even though it's full of drama, and it shows that you are angry at something. You know, the, the pain of being feminine and to go through the trials of womanhood. Um, it's a yes from me. I want to see what you do next. Thank you. Um, I said I commend you for coming um, prepared. Um, that was good. And I like the intro with the little singing. I'm sure it if it was a singing competition, you'll, you'll go to the next round. Um, your poem was very descriptive. And you took us through the various stages of trials, uh, which I appreciate. It was beautiful. And it's a yes for me. Thank you. Um, it's a no for me. Thank you. I know you from the last time. 
Oh yeah. Welcome back. Sure. Uh, what made you want to come back again? Um, I come back to develop my poetry and in the process promote Gambian poetry itself. Promote Gambian poetry? Yeah. <laughs> Are you here to win it? Hopefully, yeah. Okay, but hopefully? Uh, what can I say? I got <laughs> two people to join me. To <laughs> well, okay. Let's hear you. My fate is in your hands. Okay, um, the title of this poem is called Aspirations, and what inspired this poem is the youths that uh, went through this back way but could not make it, and some of them were imprisoned in Libya, but then the government have to bring them back. So, yeah, it's called Aspiration. I know God only tests to see the best, but this life is a mess and every day is a stress. Times are hard. Days are bad, conditions are harsh, poverty rules over our daily lives. We survive every day with only a dollar to slay. Mothers going to market, almost empty pockets. These were the reasons why we left in the first place. The back way to Europe was the only hope. A journey so hard, we gotta pay to stay alive. From Agadez to Sabah to the Libyan prisons. We were shackled and bruised, imprisoned and abused. They only see us migrants as of less importance. Our leaders told us to come home to a better life, but here we are, back to the strife. The hungry kids, the angry streets, a daily battle with the hustle, the Gambian reality, our never-ending struggle. All we needed was a change, but they gave us a challenge to live as the victims of a treacherous system. Thank you. Um, Keba, that was beautiful. Um, you're an amazing poet, and that was why last time you made it really far in the competition. Thank you. And I am glad that you're back. <laughs> However, I have to say, I've seen you perform better. Uh, I'll try not to compare your <laughs> <laughs> best performance to the previous season. But just keep in mind that you can do better, and you have to do better. Sure. But if we're voting, it's a yes for me. I'm going to take you from the Ikumba and not judge you based on the last slam. Um, what I can say, though, is there's certain advice you've taken on from the last slam, which is keeping it poignant and short and to the point. But there's one which you've forgotten, which is the long introduction. And the reason why I usually hate that is, for me, as a poet, if you give a long introduction, same thing I said to, to him, it's like you're telling everyone else listening that they're stupid, that they're slow that they're not poets. If I do it, they won't understand the message that I'm giving. So this, the, this is an advice to everyone else. Don't go into the descriptive part of explaining what you're going to do, because assume that everybody will get it, right? If they don't get it, they're not poets, right? Apart from that, I think Aliu has some serious competition, and I want to believe you're in it to win it. That was beautiful. That was a strong, strong, strong message in as few words as possible. I hope to see you go all the way. Thank you. I really do. Good luck, and that was nice. It's a yes for me. I, I think you, you kind of, um, he has always had very short poems from the beginning. Oh, and I, yeah. I have to give him oh, that. that was champion. Yes, yes. <laughs> he, he is one of my favorite po poets from the Poetry Slam to the Poetry Cafe to now. And I don't have to say much, and it's a yes for me. Thank you. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Kevin. We have Layla. You actually spell your name Layla. Layla. Yeah, it's Layla. It's Layla. Okay. <laughs> uh, how old are you? I'm 18. You're 18? Yeah. Are you still in school? Uh, I'm, a ju I'm just a graduate. Okay. And what's your favorite topic, subject? In school or poetry? Poetry. Poetry, well, I haven't done any poetry, just lines then they make sense and it's nice what do you like what what are those lines about most of the time uh mostly it's about reality and emotions emotions yeah. so which one is this about uh it's called the cry the cry so emotions <laughs> okay okay thank you why why me what have i done so wrong is it that karma is always rotating around me I can't hide it anymore. It's been a long journey thinking about all that I have passed through. 
my heart is so weak that my legs can't support me. I'm delusional. I think a lot. My heart keeps crying. But I have a friend. She taps on my shoulder and she says I'm fine. But I can't hold on to those tears because they just keep coming. They come so much that my heart begins to rumble. My intestines move up and about. I can't hold it because I'm too weak. The cry that my heart makes makes me not to trust anybody. I respected too many, but it got hurt. I got hurt. <laughs> the cries that my heart makes are the fear of my future. My mind only knows the pain. Time can't tell how the pain was. I became numb after a while of pain. Those whom I trusted betrayed me bitterly. Those whom I asked for care show me hat hatred. See, thank you. Yeah, I get it that you're not a poet, like you said. You just dabble and write a few lines. But if you do want to get into poetry, get into it. But for me, that wasn't it. So for today, it's a no. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, like Latira also commend you for the try and I did like your pace it kind of forces your audience to listen uh, but the pace was not it for me it's a no okay thank you you say thank you when people say no you say it's so gracious so I'm just gonna give you a no and you say thank you okay, thank you <laughs> Mod Lamin afternoon Mod Lamin Kato yeah um, how old are you 16 going to 17. Next month I'm having 17. <laughs> yes, I know. I remember you. Marlamin, what's the title of your poem? Um, it's about no, my dream. No, not about. What's the title? <clears throat> my dream and my land. Your dream and your land. Okay, let's get on it. The sandy lines of devilish actions where a blink of an eye can cause death through every step blood is splashed. Hearts of innocent souls are down. I'm a black slave, a slave captured from my land and brought to this devilish kingdom, a slave bold enough to dig a hole in darkness to find light, a slave that wished to transform his life into a star. See, I am red. I am red because I walk on red. I talk red. I sleep with red. I walk on red. I bust with red because red is blood. Blood is what I know. This land is terrified. There is only one thing that I can do to save myself, which is to wake up from this terrible dream. <gasps> I'm saved. Where am I? I'm in my land, the Gambia. The moon is full. It is a storytelling time. My heart melting to hot it that shines. A cluster of stars glistening, clouds dancing. Here comes her slim and pointed, the true look of a pure African woman. I met her on the 18th of February, 1965, when she gained her independence without push or pull. I asked her, Yaikan, she said, man, my Gambia. Look, I saw no coward in her eyes. Like a soldier, she powered with force of seriousness. She knew nothing about war. Peace, the clothes she wore. To her is my homeland. To her, she is my beautiful woman. To her, Nana Ndahmei Samorom Nan. To her, Kenduka Musadan. She told me, can you remember? Ndoli wo, ndoli, ndoli sakatete. Teteni wali wali kolombamba kolombamba si si badaro dara nyato nyato jamba kolongkos kongkonding kos. Those were days when every child knew the difference between pride and proud, integrity and dignity, entity and identity. She taught me. Senna sano manke, Sanna sano manke, sanna ti sanna sano manke, bari man safana na sano tekela. Ke yindimba, mba ke yindim krimbi te kimbi o ke yindimba. Today I celebrate her name and I end my story by saying, Kubanyi langa don, 
mistake and again join now. Thank you. Okay, I can't do this one. Me, I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, this is good. <laughs> you brought me back to my childhood and and the piece is good. It's dope. It's dope. It's dope. You're good. You say yes. Uh, um, well, it's good to be back. Um, one of the issues you had the last time, and then I hate making reference to your previous performance, was it's either your piece is too long, or no, it's not either, it was always too long. And it's always very dramatic. You have too much going on on the point, uh, on the performance. Um, you, you write well, you're a very good poet. I would say um, cut down on the drama a little bit, and also, I don't know. I I like the piece. I, I as far as the writing it's good, but the performance. I'll give her yes this time and hopefully next time when you come back you cut down on the drama a little bit. And okay. make sure your your poem is let it have a theme and stick to the theme. Stop throwing a whole lot into one piece. It confuses your audience. If I ask the audience what the piece was about, a lot of them are going to give me so many different answers. For me, I enjoyed the latter part of the poem. For me, I enjoyed the fact that you took us back and all of that stuff, and you made me feel like a child again. And yeah, that was that was fun. But I'll say something important to all the poets also. Poetry is about words, right? You can stand here and jump and somersault and do a circus show and all of that stuff. We don't. We want to hear the words. We want to know what you're saying. We want to feel it. We had. Someone like Champion last year that won the, the Poetry Slam, he stands there in front of the mic and he just speaks. So that's what, that's what I'm, I'm talking about. I can't change your style, we can't push you to do something different, but tone down on the drama. You scared me when you slapped yourself. Don't do that again. <laughs> okay. Please. Okay, it's a yes from you. Then don't do that again. Hi, Mr. Kota. Hello. Um, to begin with, how old are you? I'm 17. So you're still in school? Yes. Great. 11. 11. Yes. Okay. Um, you love poems, you do? Yes, I love poetry. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what do you write about? Well, I just sit down and write about anything that comes up in my mind. For how long have you been writing? Since when I was in grade four. That was like, how many years back? We will do the math for seven, you. Seven you're years. Seven. <laughs> okay, seven years back. <laughs> Uh, what's the title of your poem today? I want you guys to decide what I'm going to perform. Whoa. You want to do a freestyle? You want a freestyle? Yes, I want to freestyle. You want to risk it? Are you sure about doing a freestyle? I want to take the risk, and I know I will be successful in it. Awesome. <laughs> you, nice. you know, when we took a vote on the mean judge, I'm sure it came out. Who was the mean judge? Latir? Yeah. Yes. So I will let him uh, pick a title Undefined for you. Death. Death. Yeah. Okay. In the houses of the dead, you don't hear a noise. Neither do you hear sounds. The only thing you hear are the sounds of birds. Birds singing, singing and singing. When your parent or your guardian or somebody that is related to you is lying there, you feel like crying. In the homes of death, I fear, everybody fears. When we sit down and enjoy the luxury of life, we think about death. But do we know that death is real? Do we know that death would come one day? Do we prepare for our death? I am asking the question and I don't need you to answer. Just answer it in your head. Right now, as you are sitting down, ask yourself, am I prepared to die? Death is approaching. We must all prepare for it. I once dreamt that I am in a hole, in a hole alone, so tied up in white. I didn't know what I was doing there. I didn't understand anything at all. But when I woke up, I understand that I was in the life of that, and I am awakened again. That's just a drama, don't mind me. I'm just trying to confuse. But please, I am giving you this small piece. That must come 
and we must all face that. you're very interesting uh, first of all you gave us something you did something that was never done on the poetry slam before I would like to go in your mind did you have like a bunch of poems that were ready made and you're hoping that we will choose one of the titles that you already have no, not actually I was just coming sorry I was just coming and I'm like in my mind what if they bring something that is above my level? And I had Fatwa next to me, and she was like, you just have to go get it. So I don't actually have a fixed theme that this is what they're going to ask me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just here and prepared for whatever you give me, then give it my own understanding. I like that you're prepared for whatever we give you. Since you're very interesting, we'll make it very interesting for you. How about you do another one? Just one paragraph, because like I said, I want to be in your mind. And this one is on happiness, since Latir took us uh, that, which was a little bit dark. So I'll throw happiness at you and see what you do with it. Okay. How many of you are happy right now? Okay, I can see a lot. But why did you answer my question? Right now, I'm happy. You are happy. We are all happy, aren't we? He recited a poem. He got us all our intentions. I was happy sitting there. I was in here. I'm still happy. So it's happiness. Let's enjoy our happy life. You just said one paragraph, and this is my paragraph. Again, thank you, Muskuta. Um, I'm not sure how, about, how I feel <laughs> about it all. Um, Let's hear the other judges and we'll come back to me while I collect my thoughts. I've had better freestyles. It's a no for me. Um, just for the for, for the um, the fact that you did a freestyle, nobody ever did it, doesn't mean that it really stands out. So it's a no. Uh, Muskuta, for the effort and also throwing happiness at you and that you have lived death and you were able to no, find your way through it, so it's a yes for me. I'll say one thing to everyone. When you get on stage, come here with the best thing that you can, right? If you want to do a freestyle and risk it and you wow us, that's great. But I want to feel like you respect the platform enough to prepare and come with something really, really, really prepared on set, okay? Unless you are a genius and you, and you kill it, right? Yeah, like Immortal. If you don't kill it 100%, you're not getting a yes from me. So please. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam. Where are you from? I am from Sinchalai. Sinchalai? Yes. And how old are you? I am 23 years old. 23 years old? Yes. What do you do? I am a computer science student at the University of the Gambia. Equally, I do printing and graphic designing and teaching and so many other things. Oh, but I am a poet, a writer, and equally a blogger. You sound like Immortal X. Yes. <laughs> you know that. Yeah, writer, poet, everything. Yes. Okay. I'd, I'd love to hear what you have. What do you have for us today? I have a title and uh, appointment title, Brain Food. Brain Food? Yes. Give us some brain food. Yeah, give us some brain food, bro. When I'm imbued with the desire to preach, my hand and vibrant stick become inextricably glued. This point speaks with the tongue of wisdom of times and of men's heart. It's an eye opener and a jump start. Citing at the peak of life's greatest value, sincerity, make it your guide to becoming a plus to society. From an early age on life stage, I realized that there's difference between who you are today and who you can be tomorrow. Making meaning of your life should be your motivation to strive. Each of us has an individual wall, even though we all share the same wall. Expect nothing. Surprises are the best. Strive for everything. Always put your dreams to test. If there are footsteps too many to count, don't count. Just choose the ones to follow or leave new ones to be followed. Expect nothing. Surprises are the best. In this life, the many friends you have don't matter, but how many good friends there are in your life. How you came into this world can't matter, can't matter more than how you leave it behind. 
my heart I want to heal from the many pains I feel. I sometimes sense my senses sensing the nonsenses of the senses that man can emulate, that man can agree, that horror man can see, that nature man don't want to imitate. If God shows the way, what is there for man to say except to obey and live and then be happy and be relieved? Being conscious of your needs are the success, the seeds. Levels of consciousness are all that exist. Nothing like time exists. So never wait for tomorrow. You never realize when it arrives. For the yesterdays and todays we are once called tomorrow. If you could see in a seed, the many other seeds, leaves, stem, branches, and, and fruits in that single seed, to you are the chances of being one and equal to ten. For only then would you realize that nature is orderly and that you are a visionary leader seen so rarely. If you could see a person and believe it's you, that all men are born equal, you're free from circles, it's true, and to God you are loyal. If you can catch many fish from the sea and come the flowing day just before, to ta before time for tea, hoping to catch a bigger catch and equally prepare for a smaller catch, you are a believer. And indeed, a pious believer. All differences lies in the eyes. You only see what you want to see, but to see what is not there is just a mere wish. Always there to dare rise in any time you fall. You don't need long legs to among men stand tall. And remember, never live a life of imitation. Be proud of who you are. Trying to be someone else can never make you someone else. Like a humble star, you should always try to be you. For it is only in you wanting to be you that you would be you. And you being you is the best for you. A single tree cannot be called a forest, you must realize. If your dreams you want, you wish to materialize. Never be afraid of death. Yet, try to die never. Death is the mere season of breath, while dying is when forgotten forever. Never dream big. Small dreams should be your only big dream. Cells are tiny, life is big. Bricks are small, but in buildings out of them, men scream. Thank you. Hello, Usman. We had a similar problem last time. There was another poet that came on set and wowed everyone. Um, but the problem was two, twofold. I say there's only one poet I've seen that has managed to confuse me in, in his poetry. That's Immortal X. He's done it twice at Watermouth back in the day. Uh, and, I, and, 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 and you managed to confuse me there somewhere. And the second thing is, the one thing that I don't like about slam poets. When slam poets do this, I don't like it. That's when you have thrown in so many borrowed quotes and words, and I've, 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 I've not read as widely as, as many, but I've read widely. And almost every line that you threw into that piece, I've read somewhere, I've seen somewhere, I've picked somewhere. It's beautiful the way you wove them together. That I'll give you. And if I end up giving you a yes, because I'm going to listen to my fellow judges, it's going to be maybe to see what else you'll do. But for this time, I don't like the fact that you had so many quotes and so many borrowed words in a very, very long piece. It was nice, it was beautiful, but I've heard that before. <laughs> the poem was really long. Um, it was even hard to catch up. Like, if you ask me right now what the poem is about, I can't tell you one specific thing, because you had a lot of things thrown into the poem. And like um, La Latir said, you also had a lot of quotes in the poem. So I'll make it short like Latir always say. It's, it's a no for me. I'm still here wondering why he was pointing at me when he was talking about death. He was like, you know you're going to die, right? <laughs> so, um, I, I really, if anybody who knows me knows that I really don't um, like poems that have homophobic content or have... Um, have um, stereotypical content, so um, and also the fact that there's a lot of plagiarism, you know. So um, it's a no from me. I'm going to do this, and a lot of you might not have realized that this might have saved you, because a lot of you did not bring your A game today. So I'm sure going into the next round, we might be having people that have two no's going into the next round. For me, I'll try to see what else you can give. I'll give you a yes. Thank you. Yusuf Sonko. Welcome, Yusuf. Um, 
What's your age? 21. 21. What's the title of your piece? Believe in acting. Huh? Believe in acting. Okay. Let's do this. Delight turns to dehydration. Comfort turns to frustration. Smiley faces turn to scrubby faces. Even loyal friends sometimes change faces. Sunny days turn to darkest night and then no hope for the night. All hope sunk in the midst of the ozone. Not even the microscope can direct what is lost. I am lost. I am lost in the midst of the ozone. My dreams swallowed by the whales. And I was almost found in whales. But then I'm lost again with no gain. What else can I do? What else can I do when my hopes are no more hopeful? When my fear became more powerful? What else can I do? When my heart is but weak and in a single step ahead is longer than a week. And no tree is near to lean on. Tell me how to move on when I am lost and none is seen. And every try is seen as a sin. My life is now dreaming, but yet am I then dreaming, believing that my dreams shall come true someday. Now I do believe instead of a hopeful day. Then believe in acting, is it not the solution? Finally, I have a solution. Believe and act. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, it, it, your poem sounded like a collection of conventional wisdom we hear from around town every day. You know, keep moving. Done, born out, you know, life is just another week, and so um, I'm not impressed. It's a no. Uh, thanks for the try, it's a no for me. If I save the last guy, I'll save you. I'll see what else you have. It's a yes from me. Thank you, man. See, I'm the nice judge. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I become wicked in the end. Uh, Hi, Nay. Hello. Uh, Nay, how old are you? I'm 17. So you're also in high school? Yeah. Grade 11? Yeah. What school? SOS Harman Minor. SOS Harman Minor. What's your favorite subject? Actually, Facebook. I'm doing science. Yes, what, what's your favorite subject? Um, I guess it's poetry. Poetry? Yeah. OK. Uh, what do you love writing about? Um, I love writing about reality. Realities. Yeah. Okay, then, let's uh, say, get on with it. Um, my title is Young, Talented, and Gifted. I am young, black, and talented. I am young, dark, and trusted. Seriously been me, cause I'm committed. Flexing on my pen, cause I know, cause I know my thoughts are pure, they ain't rusted. Now, here I come again. <laughs> See, my vision from a young age is clever. It is said, Hale lumunti don hale akawe, dumusamunagis lumagdigis in a distance. Oh. Can I start again? I'm young, black, and talented. I'm young, dark, and trusted. Seriously been me, cause I'm committed. Flexing on my own pen. Cause I know, cause I know my thoughts are pure. They ain't rusted. So see, my vision from a young age is clever. Oh, remembering that day, that day I was lifted, I was said, she's going to be talented. Even though I was young and dumb and didn't know my wrong and right, know my right and left, but I tend to believe because I know one day, one day I can change the old crap system because, because I am young, dark, and talented. I just have one question before I say what I want to say. Did you did you cut the piece short? No, 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 I didn't. Where's the line about Halebu Linie Bud? 
<laughs> Bunne Kale Bunne. Chiko. You, know, you, didn't, you didn't say that line in this. I said that. You did? Yeah, I did. When you did this piece? Yeah, the I second did. time? Yeah, I did. No, nah, you didn't. No, I yeah. did. Okay, I just wanted to know whether you cut it out or whether you... Oh. Yeah. We, uh, we have JRTS. They'll show us the tape. Oh. So we'll know. <laughs> we'll know whether you did or whether you didn't. But I didn't hear it. Anyways. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a no from me. I want to see what you bring next. Um, because you, you kind of represented what you were talking about, you know? So I want to see what you bring next. So it's a yes from me. Hello, Samba Sidibe. Yes. From Bijilo. Yes. Uh, your Nyoboka area. Okay. Why are you here? Okay, I am here to educate, conquer hearts, and win. Conquer hearts and win? Yes. Okay. You have three hearts to conquer today, so good luck. What's your piece about? Why shouldn't I be angry? Why shouldn't I be angry? Yes. Wow, that's a nice topic. Let's hear it. See, I wonder why poet Sidibe always get angry. Sidibe, why do you always get angry? Oh, no, 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 no. Please, you better not ask me this rhetorical question. See, why shouldn't I be angry when loyalty Honesty, dignity, humanity, morality, and solidarity is fading away. Why shouldn't I be angry when the marabouts are questioning human mentalities? Doctors are aborting women pregnancies, teachers dating their female students, and lawyers stealing the truth for money. See, why shouldn't I be angry when a 40 years old man is making love with a 12 years old girl? When a father is impregnating his biological daughter? Oh, this is sorrowful. Seeing a mother throwing her biological child, a mother aborting her own pregnancy, a mother making love with her biological son. Oh, if I were a justice, I would say no mercy to this because it's making the world so risky. Si nyun de nyu wara sangu japu juli nyanti sunyu ibarom mu jegal nyu sunyu ibakar. Paske sunyu jamono da fa doi war niti banyene dun manko. Dun beno dun lalo. Di tongo, di songo, di kek, di raye, di jur, di sani, di bir, di yaka. See, I wonder why shouldn't I be angry when every black lady wants to be white. When my people said no to my father's culture, yesterday European culture. Oh, my people. Let's comprehend that the European capture our culture. Don't eat like a waste furniture. So why do we nurture their culture? Torture our own culture. I said that behavior is not for vulture. See, my rapture is not with that behavior. Yes, I will be get I will be angry because I'm tired for the advocation. My people have no ambition. They always said no to negotiation. See, they are innovation, always list of destruction. Their meditation is not free from corruption. See, the reason why I always get angry is beyond your imagination. So you better not ask me this rhetorical question. Thank you. Samba. <laughs> okay, that was the best way to end, end, end the night. Honestly, that was the best way to end the night. First of all, I want to say you got me you got me excited the whole time. Like the whole, from when you started to when you ended, I was happy, you know. Okay, thanks. <laughs> and that's that's a good thing. You, you went, you went great, you went great. But I swear, I was happy the whole time. I forgot all my problems. I okay, forgot, thanks. I forgot everything, and but in our problem, like, but I forgot everything. So entertaining, a plus. That was nice. That was beautiful. The wall off was impeccable. Thank you. I, I, I'll borrow the word he just said. The wall of was impeccable. And I wish you'd done a little bit more of that. It seems your tally game is, is on A. The English bits, they had their ups and downs. That but that was the fun part about it. They had their ups and downs. And, <laughs> and, 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 and the biological and culture and all of that stuff. But I just want to say, I just want to say, honestly, out of everyone that performed today, no one hit their topic nail on the head as much as you. It was, I knew, I knew what you were saying. I could relate with what you were saying. It was direct, it was free verse, it was beautiful, and, and for me, it's a very, very, very bold yes. The poetry slam needs something like this to change the narrative, to change the narrative. So I'd love to see you next time. 
a little bit more wall off. If you're in it to entertain, that's fine. If you're in it to win it, walk on the wall off. Try to just okay. okay? All right. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, like Latir, I also loved the wall off. I think it was very entertaining. Uh, just a point of correction: not every black lady woman wants to be white. Let's avoid throwing words around. Thank you. <laughs> and I see one reason why you shouldn't be angry, because I'm about to give you a no. It's a no for me. No, you know what? This is amazing. Like, you know, I like when people twist colonial speakers English, right? And and now I'm going to change the word biology for me. I'm going to say biology. And I'm not going to say advocacy. I'm going to say advocation. So, um... And I really don't want to piss you because you look angry. But there's one thing I really didn't agree with. Um, is um, that you are anti-abortion. I'm not anti-abortion. I believe women can do whatever they want to do with their bodies, whether they want to abort or not, because it's their babies, right? And that's a topic for another day. But it's a yes from me. And I want to see you come more and more. Okay. And damage this English for us, you know? Guys, nice. did you all enjoy this um, particular you session the of the Poetry Slam season two? Did you? Please give the poets a big round of applause one more time. I did enjoy it myself because while I was sitting there, I was really, like really, I wouldn't say what I was doing, but I know I was enjoying it anyway. So what I will do now is we'll just go on a short break. And after the break, we'll announce who and who is making it to the next round. If I were you, I'll have my fingers crossed. <laughs> We are from the planet scarcity of love. While our country is called hyperinflation of heartbreak, our capital city a deflation of kindness, a blood flow of a system of flirtation, a bunch of despicable, irresistible, impeccable disciples of heart crunches. Love the undefinable. Heartbreak the definable. We do not do poetry, we are poetry. back to the poetry slam season two first episode and this time around we on the elimination round and this is the part where what this is the part that i hate most because most of the people that i like so much get to go and i really thank god about it because then it's not my decision but the decision of the judges yes so no one comes to me <laughs> thank you so um we kind of like have something that we're going to do this time that we've not done the last time. And I think once you move forward, once you grow, things change. Sometimes it happens. So right here, I have two, maybe I'll give a, a bad news and another one, not so bad news anyway. We have Isaac Moxin, Cisse. you're here. Can you please step forward, please? Yes. Isaac Maxin Cisse. Been to drama. Can you please step forward? Um, Alessana Jalo, can you please step forward? Um, Yusuf Sonko, can you please step forward? Naisose, please. And yes, Naisose. So, um, I am sorry. But not so sorry. I am somehow glad to tell you guys that you have another chance next week to come on the Poetry Slam and prove whether you are fit to stay on the show. So tomorrow again, you are going to join the 15 others who have already qualified for the next round, right? So, but yours is a different case. You are coming with two short pieces. Two short pieces, right? You're coming with two short poems. You're going to recite it before any other po poets, all of you, and then the judges will decide when you're qualifying to the next round. Understood? Thank you very much. Please put your hands together for me. And yes, we have two other people that are definitely not making it to the second round. I'm sorry. And they are, <clears throat> well, Fadul Bonde and Leila Drame. I'm sorry with three no's. I'm sorry to inform you guys that this is the end for you in the Poetry Slam second season. But you can still come in the next 
uh, season, the third season, which is next year, and still prove what you can do. So on that note, the rest of you automatically qualify to the next round. And please, please give them a big round of applause for making it to the next round with no hitches. Thank you very much. We hope to see you all next week and make sure you bring on your A game every week. To the judges, thank you so much for keeping it straightforward and real all the time. And to the Poetry Slam crew, our guy, the producer, uh, assisted by um, Adam Mariam Drybelde, and of course, Winifred Nico for being part of the Poetry Slam team. And for uh, to our cameraman uh, for doing a tremendous job. And to Mama Cora for taking uh, very good pictures. Pamatar, I see you. Thank you so very much. I hope I get my picture tonight. So to the rest of the crew, Uncle Mahmoud, thank you so much. And Fatu Sane for always being there for us. See you all next week. Thank you. We are from the planet scarcity of love. While our country is called hyperinflation of heartbreak, our capital city a deflation of kindness, a blood flow of a system of flirtation, a bunch of despicable, irresistible, impeccable disciples of heart crunches. Love the undefinable. Heartbreak the definable. We do not do poetry, we are poetry.